Hey there, how's it going? Are you good? Brilliant. Here we have my car sub. There is a sub. This is the box. SPL. If you're wanting to get loud with one of these, what you would do is tune it to whatever frequency you're after and then go out and get loud. On the other hand, we have sound quality. Now that is something else. So you might be wondering what my point is. This is my point. <laughs> Okay, no, silliness out of the way with. Recently, I put some polyfill inside of this, and that was to um, see what it did. There are people putting stuff in inside mainly these types of boxes, but not many inside of these. And the ones that they usually do them to are sealed. This, as you can see, is ported. I've seen what polyfill can do for this, and for me personally, it's just an experiment. Now then, the other thing is, that is what I still have left. Most of this, if not all of it, should have gone into that, which it didn't. This had quite a bit put into it in comparison to that. This right here has two separate compartments. He is a cat. There's a sub in the bottom half of this, fourth order band pass, and there's a sub in the top of this, which is just ported. Now, depending on the box size, there's a certain ratio of wadding, fiber, stuffing, whatever you want to call it, that goes into them. Now then, like I said, with there being a lack of people even using this sort of stuff and then writing down their results, I'm going to fill it full of this stuff just to see what happens. He usually brings that to me and wants me to throw it and then I'll bring it back. He still plays fetch. What I'm going to be using in this video is this stuff. Somebody commented saying something about a local DIY store selling this stuff. That is the name of it. Quite expensive speaker systems come with um, quite a lot of this stuff inside them. And I am basically going to copy that. So I'm going to be using this inside there and uh, we're going to see how this turns out. Now I've got a few plans for this box. One of which is to repaint it because look at these weird lines and another is to lower the tuning frequency on it. So stay tuned for those videos. So when it comes to using this stuff, there is a general rule of thumb, and that is for say large enclosures like this, you wanna use about a pound of it per cubic foot. And smaller enclosures like that, start off with a small amount, test your speakers, put a bit more in, test. This is 1.2 pounds. That is the reason I got this. It doesn't tell you the weight on this, but I can tell you just from picking it up, it's probably more than enough for that. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, these speakers here and that one over there are not connected to my AV receiver. That will be weird. That is the centre speaker right there. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but if you're just trying to get loud with a sub box, then you don't need to do this. But if you're trying to improve the quality, of the bass that comes out of one, then this helps. And like my previous video starting from the right, what I have here is my laptop, the audio interface and the microphone. So once again, we are back again with the laptop and all this set up over here. This is FL Studio. And this right here is gonna tell me the volume levels of each frequency that I test. And right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test some frequencies. I'm gonna write down the volume levels of them. That way I know what they were before I put the stuffing into the box and I can compare them with what they are afterwards. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the box, not all of it, just some of it, and retest those base notes to see what the results are. Okay, so the volume on this is 555 as you can see, and the volume I usually watch movies at is around 58, 60. Reference volume is 84. On here what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a 20 hertz tone. 20 hertz is down here, so anything below that you're not really going to be able to see. Now what I'll do is I'll play an 18 hertz tone, and I don't know if you can hear that, but if I turn around, and I show you this mug that's set on top of this radiator. It's moving. 
these are the results I've gotten from the testing and it's without the EQ enabled. So they're a little wavy, but at least we've got something to compare the after with. Okay, so now let's move on to the next step of taking this out. And that right there is my car amp, by the way. Okay, the sub is now out, as you can see. Sorry if you wanted to watch me take it out. I skipped that part entirely. So um, what we have here is the stuff that I put in before. As you can see, that is a bracing that keeps this, this thing together because that does weigh quite a bit and it can flex this box quite easily. So there's a nice crucifix right there. Right then, so I think it's time to put this inside. Okay, I wonder how this unravels. Something like that. Now, do I have to take it all out? Balls, how to insulate your home. Between the joists, start from the eaves. Eaves. So you gotta start in the evening and work all night. Nice, very nice. Now, how much of this am I gonna use? Let's see, I like experiments. A few moments later. Okay, so this is how much I've left of it. And I've left that side as it is. I haven't covered these. No shit. I don't know why I'm stating the obvious. I've done all of the back of that, and then the underside of this front part, and all of this side along here. Now, I could put a bit more in, obviously, but I'm gonna put the sub in, and I'm gonna see how it sounds before I put more in. Because if you overdo it, then um, it's not good. So uh, let's see how this sounds. Okay, so the sub's back in. I'd be slightly surprised if it's raised the tuning frequency, which it shouldn't have done because I didn't put that much in. Let's just see how it goes. This is an experiment after all, so anyway. Okay, so seeing as I'm trying to make this test as accurate as possible, pause. You see these numbers on the right in yellow? I've run this test three times, four times, and these numbers have changed a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything I've put inside the box out and run the before test again a few times. Okay, so it's all out again, and there's a sub. Duh, this is all the stuff I had inside it, and it's in roughly the same position that it was in the box. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this back into there and uh, retest the before. Okay, so that's back in the box. Because I want my experiment to be as accurate as possible, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of the room. And here we have some more measurements again. Pause. So I've done this test three times now and um, I've added a decimal point and made the measurements a little more accurate. Now it's time to put everything back in again. It's a good job I don't mind doing this. And if you're wondering to yourself if I'm slightly mental right now, yes, I am. Harry Rabbit. There we are, it's back together again. What is, what are you doing, mate? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the sub back in there and um, in the way. So what I've done is I've put the stuff around the uh, cross bracing and um, I put an extra bit over here as well. Um, the rest of it is as it was. And now I'm going to put this back in and uh, retest. 328. AM. Here we have the final measurements in the form of a graph, which is much easier to look at than just numbers. So I made this using Photoshop, which is completely irrelevant to what we're talking about. But my wife came and saw me doing this and was like, why don't you just use PowerPoint? Which kind of surprised me. And um, to which I replied, I don't have PowerPoint. To which she replied, I do on my laptop. And then I just looked at her blankly for a second and continued with what I was doing. So I'm going to completely disregard the blue line because that was the middle stage and we're more concerned with the before and after. The red and green. Now as you can see there's quite a bit of difference in frequency response. Also there's a bit of difference in volume. Now the volume is less noticeable but uh, when it comes to testing the box with sine waves you can, you can quite clearly hear the difference. Now, do you see how the numbers start going up after 35 hertz and then coming down after 45? That is because of room resonance, and there was no EQ running at the time of this test, which usually sorts that out. Also, the room resonance can be sorted out using a bit of acoustic dampening, which I may do in a future video. Either way, the stuffing has extended those lower frequencies, which is nice. And basically, this was my entire aim of the video, to produce a chart like this, which showed you 
the results of using polyfill or some sort of stuffing, wadding, insulation, whatever you want to call it. So if you're thinking about doing the same thing, now you know what to expect, more or less. And in the next video, I'm going to be using this.